you for coming out to see our production of The Crucible. So this is our first student production at Norman Private Academy. And we are the three directors. We poured a lot of time, effort, and energy into this production. Um, <laughs> so we'd like to thank everyone for coming. Silence your phones, your pagers, your babies, everything, please. <laughs> and um, enjoy the show. We've worked really hard, so please enjoy. And without further ado, Arthur Miller's The Crucible. that he cannot discover no medicine for it in his books. Then he must search out. I, sir, he been searching his books since he left you. He said he might go to unnatural things for the cause of it. No, I don't know what you can say. Tell him I have sent for Reverend Hale Beverly, and Mr. Hale will surely confirm that. Tell him to look to medicine and put out all thought of natural causes. There be none. I, sir, he bid me tell you. Speak nothing of the medicine. But directly home and speak nothing of the natural causes. I, sir, I pray for her. The rumor of which Capizola, I think it's best to do it in the United States, gave himself. And probably we have to do this ourselves over there. Then watch what I say to them. Then I discovered my daughter and my niece dancing like humans in the forest. Uncle, we did dance. Did you tell them I confess that I would be whipped if I must? But they are speaking which crap. But he's not reached. I feel I cannot go, go before the congregation, but I know you haven't opened up with me. What did you do with her in the forest? We danced, Uncle, and we lived under the bush so suddenly she took fright and fainted. I would never hurt that he had loved her dearly. Abigail, if you trapped up your spirit stuff last night, I must know now for my enemy's blow, and it will wound me with it. We never conjured spirits. So why can't she not move herself since midnight? Abigail, this child is desperate. I saw Tisha moving her arms over the fire when I came. Why was she doing that? And I heard the screeching and the gibberish coming out of her mouth. She was swimming like a dumb beast over that fire. She always sings her favorite songs when we dance. I cannot blink what I saw, Abigail, for my enemies, for my enemies will not blink it. I saw a dress lying on the grass. Dress? I uh, I thought I saw someone naked on the truth. You know he was naked. You mistake yourself. I though. saw it. Now tell me true, Abigail, and I pray you feel the will of truth upon me. For now, my ministry is, is at stake. My ministry and perhaps your cousin's life. Whatever about me, I have done here, tell you, tell you to me now. For I dare not even take it word of when I go before them there. There's nothing more. I swear it, Uncle. Give me a right answer. Your name in the town. It is entirely white, is it not? I am sure it is, Uncle, but do not blush about my name. Abigail, is there any other reason than you have told me that for you being discharged from Uncle Proctor's house? She hates me, Uncle, for she must. For I would not be her slave. Is a lion in the cold sin of the moon, and I would not work for such a woman. Abigail, I heard it. I heard, I've heard words say, and I told you as I heard it, that she comes so ready to church this year that she would not sit so close to something so new. What significance? What significance does it have? They want slaves, not such as I. Do you begrudge my bed, Uncle? No. Goody Proctor is a gossiping liar. I will not have him said my name is. Why, Goody Proctor? Come here. Marvel is surely struck a call upon you. Why, what is. How can she fly 
right, how high? No, she never Rocket, did. sir, she did. Mr. Collins started going over Ingersoll's barn and came down light as a bird, she what? says. Mr. Putnam, good morning. It's Providence. The thing is out now. It's Providence. What's now, sir? What's... Why? Her eyes are closed. Look, you ran. Why, that's strange. Ours is open. You know, Ruth is sick. I not call it sick. The devil's touch is heavier than sick. It's death, you know. It's death driving in a fork and hoot. Now, why? How did it fail? She ails as she must. She never wakes this morning, but her eyes open, and she walks and sees not, hears not, and cannot eat. Her soul is taken, surely. They say you said for Robert Hale Beverly. A precaution only. Mr. Hale has all has He has, indeed, and found a witch in Beverly last year, and lets you remember that. Now, but yeah, that cannot be, that cannot be confirmed. They only thought it were a witch, and I'm sure there'd be no element of witchcraft here. No witchcraft? Now, look, like Mr. Thomas, Thomas, I pray you, leave not to wish, but I, I know you, you least of all Thomas would never wish so disastrous a charge laid upon me, so I pray you, leave not to wish, but they will howl me out of Salem for such watching in my house. Mr. Paris, I've taken your part in all contention here, and I would continue, but I cannot hold back in this. There are horrible adventure spirits in my hand and these children. But, but Thomas, you cannot. And Thomas, pray for you, Mr. Paris, I've laid seven babies on that has in this earth. I swear, you never saw more hardy babies born, and yet each would wither in my arms the very night of their birth. I spoke nothing, but my heart has clamored intimations, and now I see my youth, my only turn in strange. She's become a secret child this year, and shrivels like some mouth were sucking on her life, too, and so I thought to send her to your Tichibo. Tichibo? What makes Tichibo? knows how to speak to the dead, Mr. Paris. Conjuring up the dead is a formidable sin. And I take it upon my soul that who else may tell me who murdered my babies? Woman! They were murdered, Mr. Paris, and mark this as a sign. Mark it. Last night, last night, my Ruth were ever so close to their souls. For how else is she struck down but some powerful dark force were to shut her mouth? It is a marvelous sign, Mr. Paris. Don't you understand? There's a murdering witch among us. Bound to keep herself in the dark. Let your hands make her what they will. Do not blink at more. So you were conjured up spirits last night. Why, sir, did you but did you and Ruth me? I feel one proper payment for my charity. Now I'm undone. You're not undone. Let you take hold here. Wait for no one charge to declare yourself. You discovered witchcraft. In my house? In my house, Thomas? They will topple me with this. They will make a man of your pardons. I only got to see how bad he is. Why aren't you home? This is rude. Her grandma comes. She's improved a little. I, I think. She gave her powerful things before. Ah, I decided to like, I feel no more goody pile. No more grand sneeze. And then I get to shake her wits together, I'm sure. Will you do that, Thomas? I'm good. I'm good. You prayed since midnight. Why don't you go down? I have no answer for those people. I'll, I'll wait for Mr. Hell to arrive. If it was the end. Mr. Ferris, let you strike out against the devil. The village will bust you for it. You come downstairs, go pray with them. The thirsty for your word, mister. Surely, go pray with them. I'll lead them in a song, but they speak nothing of witchcraft. The cause is yet unknown. I've had enough contention since I can't have one more. Mercy, you go home to Ruth, do you hear? I know. If she goes for the window, cry for me, Elmonds. I will. How is Ruth sick? I know it's weird as she seems to walk like a dead woman since last night. Betty, Betty, you try to sit on me, stop this. Have you tried beating her? I gave you the good one and woke her up. Here, let me have her. No, she's not. Look, if they be questioners, tell them about the dancing. I told them not already. I am no more. They know teach you about conjured Ruth Putnam's dead sisters. I am one more. He saw you naked. Oh, Jesus. Abby, why don't we do the village is out? The whole village is talking witchcraft to Abby. They'll be calling us witches. She needs to talk, I know it. Abby, you must tell the truth. Which trees are hanging there, are hanging, like they did in Boston two years ago. We must tell the truth, Abby. You'll only be with for Dan's sake and the other babies. We will be wet. I never done none of it. I only looked. Only looked, Mary one. But what have you encouraged you have? Betty, don't sit up and stop this. I talked to your papa and I told him everything you did, so there's nothing to do. I want my papa! I hailed you, Betty. Mom's dead and buried. Let my mom. Let my mom! I told him everything we did. There's nothing to do. You drank blood, Abby. You didn't tell him that. You will never say that. You will never say that. Oh, if I hear that any of you breathe a word or the edge 
of the world and the other things, and I would come to you in black and terrible night, and I would think about coming to you right now and show you. And you know I can do it too. I saw Indians smash my dear parents' heads on the pillow next to mine, and I seen some reddish work done tonight, and I can make you wish you'd never seen the sun go down. And you, Sam, stop this! It's gone, or Abby, she's going to die! It's I said, shut it, Mary Warren! Oh, Mr. Proctor. Be you foolish, Mary Warren, be you deaf? How may I pay you when I'm looking for you more than my cows? You know I forbid you to go to Salem. I only come to see the great doings in the world. I'll show you what great doing on your ass one of these days. Now get you home. My wife's waiting with your work. I'd best be off. I have my little watch. Good morning, Mr. Fox. Did I tell Stormy Mary? What's this mischief here? Oh, no. She's only gone silly somehow. I'll run past my house to Salem for the building until morning. Counts as my wish, right? Oh, gosh. We began to be in the woods last night, and my uncle had been in us. We took prices off. You're wicked, aren't you? We'll be collecting the stocks before you want. It's in the woods. Soft as well. Well, have you ever done this? I'm going to see if you can fly. I know you better. I come see you in mischief, your uncle grew it. You'll put it out of mind, Abby. John, I waited for you every and night. And I never give you hope to wait for me. There's something better than hope, I think. You'll put it out of mind, Abby. You never touched. I'll not be coming for you more. You sure this morning with me? You know me better. It's she who put me out. You never tell like it were you. You love me then, and you do now. I mean, that's a wild thing to say. A wild thing to say, wild things, but not so wild a thing. I've heard this stuff about put my foot off the farm for seven months. John, I just want you to push draws me to my window. Have you told me you've never looked up? I may have looked up. Hi, and you must do it on the tree, man, John. I know you. You do not sleep. I do not sleep for drinking. I cannot drink when he's quite big and I find him in the door. Child. How do you call me child? Abby, I may have figured you softly from time to time, but I'll cut off my hand before I'll ever reach for yours again. We've never touched. Hi, but we did. I, but we did not. Oh, how I marvel that the strong man may let a sickly wife. You will speak nothing of Elizabeth. She's blackening my name in the bill. She's telling lies. Then I look for women. I never knew the lying lessons I was taught by these Christian women in a convent bed. And I would beat me and tear the light out of my eyes. I cannot, I will not, whatever sin it is, you love me yet, John Proctor. Pity me, John, pity me! Pity me! What's that way? Girl, stop that way! What's up? Betty, what are you doing to her? Betty! She gave her the psalm and said, Listen, the psalm, the psalm, she can't bear to hear the Lord's name. First of all, Tell, tell him what happened here. Mark it for a sign. Mark it. It's a religious sign. Wish our book here. It's a religious sign. My mother told me that. When they cannot bear to hear the name of Rebecca, 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 go to her. We're lost. <laughs> they cannot bear to hear the Lord's name. There is hard sickness here, Giles Corey, so please keep them quiet. I'm not said a word. Anybody here can testify that I haven't said a word. If she wants quiet, I heard your Ma'am, be quiet now. <laughs> what is your turn? Good nurse, will you go to my room and see if she wakes? I think she'll wake in time. Pray, calm yourselves. I have 11 children and 26 times a grandma, and I've seen them all through their silly seasons. And when it comes, they'll run to the devil both legged. I think she'll wake and she tires of it. A child's spirit is like a child. You can never catch it by running after it. You must stand still and for love. It will soon itself come back. All right, that's the truth of your Rebecca. This is no silly season, Rebecca. My roof is bewildered. Rebecca, she cannot eat. Perhaps she's not hungry yet. Mr. Paris, I hope you're not in search of these spirits. I've heard promise of that outside. A wide appearance running the parish that the devil might be among us, and I will satisfy them that they're wrong. Then let you come on and tell them they are wrong. Do you not consult the wardens before you call these minister to look for devils? He's not here to look for devils. Then what is he coming for? There's children dying in the village, Mr. I see none die. And this society will not be a bag of swing around your head, Mr. Paris. Did you call the meeting before you? I'm sick of meetings. Can another man call a meeting? He may turn his head, but not to hell. Pray, John, be calm. Mr. Paris, I think you best send Reverend Hale back as soon as, they, as soon as he comes. This will set us all to arguing again in this society. We thought to have peace this year. I think about your line of the doctor now. A good prayer. Rebecca, the doctor is back. If so, he is. Then let's go to God for the cause of it. There is prodigious danger in the seeking of loose spirits. Let us rather blame ourselves. How many we blame ourselves? I'm one of nine sons of potency that have people in this province. Now I'm one child of age and she shrivels. I cannot fathom that. But I must. You think it's God's work. You should never lose a child or a grandchild either, and I lose all but one? 
There are wheels within wheels in this village and fires within fires. Look over in hell comes, you look for You can not command your Paris. You vote by name in the society, not by acreage. I don't believe you thought so good on this society, Mr. Proctor. I don't believe you south of you. No flu. I have trouble enough without you preach on the hellfire and bloody damnation. It Take it to heart, Mr. Paris. There are those who do not even come to church anymore because you hardly ever mention God anymore. There is either obedience or the church will burn like hell. Is Can you me? speak one minute without reminding hell again? It's I'm sick of hell! It's not for you to say what is good for you to hear. That may speak my heart, I think. What are we? Quakers? We're not Quakers here yet. And Mr. Proctor, you mentioned that you're followers. My followers? I have followers. There's a party in the church. I'm not blind. There's a party and a faction. Against you. Against him and all authority. Why then I must fight it and join? He is not me. He confessed it now. I mean it so, Rebecca. I like not the smell of this authority. No, you cannot break charity with your minister. You are another kind, John. Clasp his hand and make your peace. I have cropped a soul and lumber to drag home. What say you, Giles? He says there's a party. Let's fight it and join it. Actually, John, I've changed my opinion of this man. I beg your pardon, Mr. Paris. I didn't think you had so much eye for this. Why, thank you, Giles. It comes to the question, it brings forth the question that has been facing us all these years. Think of it. Why for is everyone suing everyone else? It's a deep thing. Deep in talk has a pit. I've been to court six times. Can no man say good morning to you without you climbing for defamation, Giles? You're old. And you're not hearing as well as you did. John Proctor, I only now collected four pound damages for you publicly claiming I burned the roof off your house. And I hope I may call you deaf without charge. Now, I must drag my lover home. Let's save you. A moment, Mr. Proctor. Who's the that you made me drag in? My lumber, by my forest, by the riverside. That tract is in my bounds, Mr. Proctor. It's in my bounds. I bought that bound from Goody Nurse's husband five months ago. It sounds clear my grandfather's will that all the land- Your there... grandfather had a habit of willing land that never belonged to him, if I may say it plain. Hi, that's God's truth. He must nearly rode away my northern pasture, but he knew I'd break his little fingers if he did. Now let's get going, John. Have the sudden feel of pork coming up. You'll fight to drag one piece of my lumber away! Hi. I'll sink my main for your club and rid on you! Ray, someone take it. Mr. Harris, so nice to see you again. Oh, these are heavy. It must be. It's a good way to put authority. Well, you do come prepared. You should need hard study if it comes to tracking down the old boy. You cannot be Rebecca Nurse. I am, sir. Do you know me? It's strange how you know But I suppose you look at such good soul should. We've all heard it for great charity in Beverly. Have you met this gentleman? Mr. Thomas Putnam and his Dubai fan. Putnam? I don't expect in such a distinguished company, sir. I've seen Thomas today, Mr. Hill. So do you come to our house to kill our child? Her child ails too. Her soul. Her soul seems flown away. She sleeps and yet she walks. She cannot eat. Cannot eat. Do you end up with the children? No, these are farmers. John Proctor, he don't believe in which. I never spoke on which is one way or another. What say you, child? I must be going. Actually, John, I think I'll stay. I have a few queer questions of my own asses, fellow. Mr. Hale, I hear you are a sensible man. I pray you leave some of it here and say it. Now, Mr. Hale, what are you looking at, child? We discovered her by the highway this morning, and she will wave in her arms as though she fly. Try some fly. Now, let me instruct you. We cannot look to superstition in this. The devil is precise. The marks of his presence are definite to stone. And I must tell you all that I shall not proceed unless you are if you're not prepared to believe me, if I should find no who's upon the pond. It is a free, sir. It is a free. We'll abide by your judgment. Good then. Now, sir, what were your first warning of this strangeness? Why, uh, I discovered her and her cousin and ten or twelve other girls dancing in the forest last night. You commit dancing? Uh, no, you were Mr. Harris' slave has knowledge of conjuring, sir. Uh, yeah, we cannot I know it. I sent my child. She should learn from Tinchba who murdered her sister. But yeah, you sent a child to conjure with the dead. I'll have God judge me. Not you. Not you, Rebecca. I'll not have you judging me no more. Work to lose seven children before they go the day. Shh. Such a little child. Hi. Uh, what book is it, sir? It's there. Uh, here. Here is all the invisible world, caught, defined, and calculated. In these books, the devil's hand stripped of his own disguises. Here are your familiar spirits, your incubi and subdivide, your wishes that go by air, by land, and by sea, and your wizards of the night and of the day. Have no fear now. We shall find him out of these moments, and I need to crush him utterly if he has shown his face. What hurt the child, sir? I cannot tell. If she is truly in the devil's grip, we may have to rip and tear to get her free. I think I'll go then. Too old for this. Why, Rebecca? This is my only up the boy for our troubles today. Let us hope for that. Oh, God, for you, sir. I hope you don't mean we're going to save you here. What shall we do? Come, Mr. Hill. Let's get on.
Now make the head. I've always wanted to ask a learned man. What signifies the reading of strange books? What books? I cannot tell, for she hides them. Who does? Martha, my wife. Buddy and I are find her reading in the corner out of a strange book. Now what do you make of that? Well, that's not necessarily. Like, it just comforts me. Like one night, mark this, mark this. I tried, I tried, I tried, but I could not pray. But then after she stopped reading the book, mark this. I could pray again. Stop your prayer. Now that is interesting. I'll speak further on that. Now I'm not saying she's trying to devil now. I just want to know what these books mean. Alright, we'll discuss it. Now mark me. If the devil is in her, you will witness some frightful wonders around the room. So please keep your wits about you. Mr. Putnam, stand close in case she flies. Now, Betty dear, will you sit up? Hmm. Can you hear me? I am John Hale, Minister of Beverly. I've come to help you, dear. Do you remember my two little girls in Beverly? Why would the devil choose my house to strike? We have all manners of licentious people in the village. What victory would the devil have to win a soul already backed? It is the best the devil wants, and who is better than the minister? That's deep, Mr. Paris. Deep, deep. Betty, will you answer Mr. Hale? Betty, does someone afflict your child? It need not be a woman, mind you, or a man. Perhaps some bird invisible to others comes to you. Perhaps a pig, a mouse, or any beast at all. Is there some figure but you thought? Hmm. Et domini, et vili, et so infernus. Abigail, what sort of dancing were you doing within the forest? I'm a dancing zone. That I saw kettle. That What sort of soup were in this kettle, Abigail? There were, um, there were beans and there were lentils. And... Mr. Parents, you do not notice that you any living thing in this kettle, a spider a mouse, a frog. Do you believe there's something in this? They jumped in. What jumped in? Why, a frog. A frog? I mean, Abigail, and maybe your cousin is dying. Did you call the devil last night? No, no. Did you want to like to speak in Tichiba? Oh, yeah. Can you go get Tichiba? How did she call him? I know not. She spoke Barbados. You do not notice that you any strangeness when she called him. A sudden cold wind, perhaps, a trembling below the ground. I don't know. Betty, you can You cannot make me out here. Did your cousin drink any of the brew in that kettle? No, she didn't. Did you drink it? No, I didn't. Did Tichiba ask you to drink it? She tried everything. Why are you concealing? Have you sold yourself to Lucifer? I never sold myself. I'm a good girl, a proper girl. She made me do it. She made Betty do it. Gabby. She comes to me. She makes me go and drink blood. Blood? My baby's blood? No, no, chicken blood, chicken blood. I, I, I gave you chicken blood. Woman, have you enlisted this child to the devil? I don't trust the devil. Why can she not wake? Are you silencing this child? I have no power over this child. I love me, Betty. You have sent your spirit out from this child, have you not? She you sent her spirit out of me during church. She makes me laugh in prayer. She has often laughed at prayers. She fed me, they charge you, fed me. Don't her. lie. She comes to me every night. She's speaking for pain. Oh, she's telling me to. Sometimes I wait, and I find myself standing in an open doorway with a stitch of clothing on my body. I hear her laughing in my dreams. I hear her. Mr. Hale, Mr. Hale. Did you go? I want you to wake this child. I have no power. You most certainly do, and you will free her from it now. When did you compact with the devil? I, I never compact with no devil. You will confess yourself. I will whip you to your death, did you want? She must be taken. She must be taken in hand. No, 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 no. Don't, don't kill Tichiba. I don't work with the devil. The devil? Then you saw him. No, Tichiba. I know that when we bind ourselves to hell, it is very hard to break with it. We are going to help you tear yourself free. Yes, sir. Is there anyone else working with this devil? Who? Um, he, he, he has many numerous witches. Does he? Tichiba, yes. look into my eyes. Come, look into me. Now you would be a good Christian woman, would you not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you love these little children? I love them with all my heart. And you love God, did you? Oh, I love God. Did you love God? And God's holy name. Oh, God. Bless God. And to his glory. Oh, give God the glory. Open yourself, Tichiba. Open yourself and let God's holy light shine upon you. Oh, God bless Tichiba. When the devil comes to you, does he ever come with another person? Perhaps another person in the village. Someone you know. Was it a man or woman that came with him? Um, a woman. It was woman. A woman, you said? What woman? Uh, it, it was dark and, and, and I couldn't see him. And you could see him, but you could you not see her? Uh, they, they, were, they were running around and they were, they, were, they were carrying things and... You out of Salem? Yes. Salem witches? Yes, sir, I believe so. Did you, you must have no fear to tell us who we are. You understand? Yes. We will protect you. The devil can never overcome a minister. You know that, do you not? Yes, sir, I know. You have confessed yourself to witchcraft and that's if you wish to return to heaven's side and we will bless you, did you Oh, God bless Tichiba. You are God's instrument, put into our hands, to help us discover the devil's agents among us. 
You were selected, Jichiba. You were chosen to help us cleanse our village. So speak utterly, Jichiba. Turn your back on him and face God. Face God, Jichiba, and God will protect you. God bless, Jichiba. Who came to you with the devil? Two, three, four, how many? Four, there are four. Oh, their names, their names. How many times he bid me kill you, Mr. Paris? Kill me? Yes. The devil called me, he come in the night, and he told me to cut your throat, and I say, no, no, you lie, devil, you lie, and he say, no, Mr. Paris is no goodly man, and I say, and, and, and there was and there was Sarah Good, and there was and there was Goody Osborne, and Osborne? I knew it. She were midwife me three times. I begged you, Thomas. I begged you, and I, I begged him not to call her. I always feared her. My baby's always shriveled in her arms. Take courage. You must give us all their names. How can you bear to see this child's suffering? Look at Tichuba. Look at her God-given innocence. Her soul is so tender. We must protect her, Tichuba. The devil is out and praying on her like a beast upon the flesh of the pure lamb. God will bless you for your help. this afternoon. Why? I have no business in Sarah. I did speak of going earlier this week. But I've felt better than since. Mary Warren's there today. How'd you let her? You know I forbid her to go to Sarah. I couldn't stop her. It, it is false. It is false, Elizabeth. You're the mistress here, not Mary Warren. She finding all my strength away. How many that must frighten you? It is mouse no more. I forbid her go, and she raises up her chin like the daughter of a prince in Sesame. I must go to Salem, Goody Proctor, as official of court. Court? What court? I. It is the proper court they have now. They've sent four judges out of Boston, waiting magistrates of the general court, and at the head sits the deputy governor. Oh, she's mad. Oh, to God she were. There'd be 14 people in the jail now, she says. And though we tried, 
And the court has the power to hang them too, she says. No, they've never hanged. The deputy governor promised hanging you if you'll not confess, John. The town's gone wild, I think. But she speaks of Abigail. I thought she were saying to hear her. Abigail brings the other girls to the court and where she walks a parlor with a parlor like the sea for Israel. When folks are brought before them, if they scream and howl and fall to the floor, the person is clapped in the jail for bewitching them. It is black mist. You must go to Salem, John. You must tell them it is the fraud. I is. It is true. Let me go to Ezekiel Cheever. He knows you well. Tell him what she said to you last week at her uncle's house. She said it had not to do with witchcraft, did she not? Aye, she did. She did. God forbid you keep that from the court, John. I think that must be told. Aye, they must. I will think of it. I will go to Salem now, John. Let you go tonight. I know. I cannot keep it. I say I will think of it. Good, then. What you think of it? I may only wonder how I prove what she told me. If the girls are safe now, it would not be so easy to prove she's a fraud. She told it to me in a room alone. I had no proof for it. You were alone with her? For a moment, I. Why then? It's not as you told me. For a moment, the others come in soon after. Do as you wish them. Woman, I'll not have your suspicion. I have I will no. not have it. Then let you not earn it. You doubt me yet. John, if it were not Abigail that you must go to hurt, would you falter now? I think not. Now look you. I see what I see, John. You will judge me no more, Elizabeth. I have good reason before I think to charge fraud on Abigail. Let you look sometimes in the goodness of me and judge me not. I have forgotten Abigail. And I... Oh, spare me. You forgive nothing and you forget nothing. I've gone tiptoe in this house all seven months, let I think to please you. And still, a funeral marches around your heart. I cannot speak, but I am doubting. Forever judge for lies until I come into a court when I come into this house. John, you are not open with me. You saw where the proud you said. I will plead my honesty no more, Elizabeth. John, I am only. No more! I should have warned you down when I first heard your suspicions. But like a Christian, I wilted and I confessed. I confessed! Some dream I had when I mistook you for God that day, but let you know that you're not. And let you look sometimes in the goodness in me and see the goodness that I do. I do not judge you. The magistrate sits in your heart that judges you, and you're thought you but a good man. Elizabeth, your justice would freeze beer. How do you go to Salem when I forbid? Do you mock me? I'll beat you if you leave again. I am sick, I am sick, Mr. Proctor. Pray, pray, hurt me not. I'm in the proceedings all day. And what are these proceedings here? When will you proceed to keep to this house? And my wife not holding well? I made the gift for you today, Giddy Proctor. Well, thank you. I had to sit long hours in the chair and pass the time with sewing. It's a fair topic. We must all love each other now, Lady Proctor. I indeed, we must. I must go to bed now. I have to wake up early in the morning and clean the house. Harry, is it true? Would there be 14 women or else? No, sir. There'll be 39 now. Why is she sleeping? What ails your child? <laughs> Osborne. Oh, hang. Hang, hang, you say? I. The deputy governor won't permit it? He sentenced her, he must. But not Sarah Judge, for Sarah Good confessed, you see. Confessed to what? That she, she sometimes made a compact with Lucifer, and wrote her name in his black book with her blood, and promised to torment Christians till God's thrown down, and we shall worship hell forevermore. Surely you know what a jabber she is. Certainly you told them that. In open court, she near choked us all to death. Oh, Mary, Mary, surely you do not believe that. She sent her spirit out to hurt us. I never heard you mention that before. I never knew it before. I never knew anything before. When she came into the court, I say to myself, I must not accuse this woman for. She sleep in ditches, and so very old and poor. But then, then she sit there, denying and denying, and I feel a misty coldness climbing on my back, and the skin on my skull begin to creep, and I feel a collapse around my neck, and I can And they caught her in a flat body. It 
still condemned her. Why, well, they must think she condemned herself. But the proof, the proof. I told you the proof. It's hard proof, hard as ground, the judges said. You will not go to court again, Mary Warren. I'm amazed you don't see what way you work we do. Some work it is for young girls to hang the old women. But they'll not hang them if they confess. Sarah Good will only sit in jail for some time. And here's a thought for you. Could he good? Pregnant. Pregnant? Are they mad? The woman's near to 60. They had Dr. Griggs examine her and she's full to the brim. And smoking a pipe all these years, and no husband either. But if they'll not hurt the innocent child, leave them not a marvel. You must see it, sir. It's God's work we do. So, I will be gone every day now for some time. I'm, I'm an official of the court. All of you. I'll not stand with it anymore. Mary, Mary, promise now you're saying no. Say yes, Mr. Sailor, Mr. Proctor, we must just come to work. But there be a monstrous prophet in it. She thinks to take my place, John. She cannot think it. John, have you ever shown her somewhat of contempt? She may not pass you in the church, but you'll blush. I may blush for my sin. I think she sees another meaning that blush. And what's seen you, Elizabeth? What's seen you? I think you'd be somewhat ashamed. Why I'm there, she's so close. Why will you know me, woman? If I was stolen, I would have cried for shame to step up. Then go and tell her she's a whore. Whatever promise she may sense, break it, John. Break it. Fine, but I will. Oh, how willingly. I pray you to grudge not my anger. I will curse her harder than the oldest in her help, but begrudge not my anger. Your anger? I only ask you. Am I so base? Do you truly think me base? I never called you base. Then how do you charge me with such a promise? Let a stallion give her from and I give her girl. Then why do you anger with me when I bid you break it? Because it speaks deceit, and I am honest. And I see now that your spirit twists are on a single error in my life, and I will never tear it free. You will tear it free. When you come to know that I will be your wife, or no wife at all, she has an error in you yet. John Proctor, when you know it well. Good evening. Why, Mr. Hale, could you? I hope I did not startle you. No, no, it's just a high on your horse. Where's the wife Proctor? Now, uh, Elizabeth, I hope you're not off to bed yet. No, sir. We're just not ex expecting visitors this far past dark. Well, will you, will you sit down? Well, let you say good luck, Proctor. Do, do you drink cider, Mr. Hale? No, no, it rebels my stomach. I have some further traveling after night. I'll not keep you, but I have some business with you. Business with the court? No, no. I come up to, I come up my own, without the court's authority. Hear me. I know not if you're aware, but your wife's name is mentioned in the court. Oh, our own Mary Warren told us, and we're entirely amazed. I am a stranger here, as you know. And in my ignorance, I find it hard to draw clear opinions of those that can accuse before the court. And so this afternoon, now tonight, I go from house to house. I come down from Rebecca Nurse's house and dwell. Rebecca's charge? How forbid such a one be charged? She is, however, mentioned so much. You will never believe, I hope, that Rebecca trafficked with the devil. No, it is possible. And surely you cannot think so. It is a strange time, sister. No man can doubt that the forces of dark have gathered in monstrous attack upon this village. There is too much evidence now tonight. You will agree, sir. I have no knowledge in that line, but you surely cannot think of so pious when a woman be secretly the devil's bitch after sending a year of good prayer. Aye, but the devil is a wily one. You cannot deny it. However, she is not confused, and I know she will not be. 
I thought, sir, put some questions as to the Christian character of this house, if you permit me. We have no fear of questions, sir, sir. Good, then. In the book of records that Mr. Paris keeps, I know that you are rarely in church on Saturday. No, sir, you are mistaken. Twenty-six times in seventeen months, sir. I must call that rare. Will you tell me why you were so absent? I knew not that I should have come to that man before. I came on a day, and when I could not, I stayed here. And my wife was sick this morning. So I am told. <coughs> Human, why could you not come alone? I surely came when I could, but when I could not, I prayed in this house. Doctor, your house is not a church. Your theology must tell you that. And it also tells me that the minister may pray with any of golden candlesticks. What golden candlesticks? Since we built the church, we had pewter candlesticks adorned upon the altar, and Francis Nurse made them, and you know a sweeter hand never touched them up. But Paris came, and he preached nothing but golden candlesticks for twenty a week. I tell you true, sir, I labor the earth from the dawn day to the blink of night, and I tell you true, when I see my money clamoring at his elbows, it hurt my prayer, sir, it hurt my prayer. I think the man dreams cathedrals and not clapboard meeting houses. And yet, Mr. A Christian on Sabbath day must be in church. Tell me, you have three children? Hi, boys. How comes it that only two are baptized? I like it not that Mr. Paris lays hand upon my baby. Say, Mr. Parker, that is not for you to decide. The man's ordained, therefore the light of God isn't there. What is your suspicion, Mr. Hale? I have, no I have nailed the roof upon the church and I hung the door. Did you? That, that's a good sign, then. Maybe we have been too quick to bring the man to book, but surely you cannot believe we desired the destruction of religion in this house. I have, but there, there is a softness in your record, sir, a softness. I think we were feeling too hard on Mr. Paris, I think so. But surely we never loved the devil here. Do you know your commandments, Elizabeth? I surely do. There be no mark of blame upon my life, Mr. Hale. I, mean, I am a commonant Christian woman. And you, sir. I. The commandments. Let's repeat them, if you will. Thou shalt not kill. Thou mm -hmm. shalt not steal. Yes. Nor comfort thy neighbor's goods. I. Nor bear to thee any graven image. Yes. Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. Thou shalt remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt honor thy mother and father. Thou shalt bear no false witness. And thou shalt not bear unto thee any graven image. You have said that twice now, sir. Aye. You see, sir, between the two of us we know them. I think it would be but a small fault. The algae, sir. It is a fortress. No crack in a fortress may be accounted small. There be no love for Satan in this house, minister. I pray. I pray to you. Well, I bid you look at that. Mr. Hale, I do think you are suspecting me somewhat, are you not? Pretty proctor, I do not judge you. My duty is to add what I may to the godly wisdom of the court. I pray you both good health and good fortune. Good night, sir. I think you tell him, Justin. What's that? Will you tell him? I have no proof for it, except that my word be taken. But I know that the children's sickness have not to do with witchcraft. Not to do with witchcraft. Mr. Paris discovered them dancing in the woods and they took quite a while. Who told you this? Abigail Williams. Abigail? Aye, Abigail Williams told me the day you came, sir. Abigail Williams told you they had not to do with witchcraft? Aye. Why? Why did you keep this? I knew not that the time had gone so daft and nonsense. Nonsense? Sir, I have myself examined Sarah Good, Tichba, and numerous others that have confessed to dealing with the devil. They have confessed it. And why should they not? There are them that will confess to anything before the hand. Have you not considered that? I have, I have indeed. And you, would you testify to this in court? I had thought not to go to court. Do you falter here? I falter, no. But I knew now that my word be taken true, as such a steady minded minister as you would, would accuse such a pious woman. I may falter here, sir, I may. But let you open with me. For I have a rumor that troubles me. It has been said that you will no belief that there may even be witches in the world. Is that true, sir? I do not what I have said. I may have said it, but. I, I cannot believe they come amongst us now. And you do not believe? I know the Bible speaks of witches, and I will never doubt that. And you, woman? I cannot believe. You cannot? That. Elizabeth, you're bewildering. I cannot believe a devil may own a woman's soul and she keeps it in upright ways as I have. I am a good woman, and I know it. You could believe that I am the only duke who work in the world, and yet be secretly bound to Satan that I must tell you, sir. I do not believe it. A woman? You do believe there are witches. If you believe that I am one, then say there are none. You surely do not fly against the gospel. Do you believe the gospel, sir, every word? Question Abigail Williams about the gospel, not myself. Mm -hmm. This be a Christian house, sir, a Christian house. God, keep you both. Let the third child be quickly baptized and go you without fail into each Sunday into Sabbath prayer and keep a solemn, quiet way about you. Giles! Giles, what's the matter? They take my wife and his Rebecca! Rebecca's in the jail? We come down from the jail. They won't even let us in to see them. Town's surely gone wild, Mr. Hale. Perfect Hale, can you not speak to the deputy governor? I mean, surely we have these people mistaken. Pray yourself calm, Mr. Morris. 
surely such a woman will never be charged. How could she ever charge these murders? My wife is charged with a marvelous supernatural murder could he pump its babies? Believe me, Mr. Rivers. If Rebecca Nurse is tainted, then nothing can stop the whole green world from burning. Let you rest upon the justice of the court. The court will send her home. I know it. You cannot need to be tried by the court. Nurse, though our hearts break, we cannot flinch. These are new times, sir. There is a misty plot of what's so subtle we would be criminal to cling to old respects and ancient friendships. I have seen too many frightful proofs of it in court. The devil is alive in Salem, and we dare not quail to follow wherever the accusing finger points. But surely such a woman will never murder children. Man, remember, until an hour before the devil fell, God thought him beautiful in heaven. Mr. Hale, I never said you were a witch! I only said you were reading books! Mr. Corey, exactly what complaint were made against your wife? That dirty mongrel qualified charge. You see, four or five months ago, he buy a pig for my wife, Martha. Then it died soon after. So he goes complaining to my wife. And my wife, Martha, says, Well, Cotch, if you can't feed a pig properly for a month, you are only live many. And so now he claims that my Martha cursed him that I not own a pig for longer than a month because he cut them with the books. Good evening to you, Proctor. Why, Mr. Cheever? Good evening. Good evening, all. Mr. Hale? Good man have to burn and help with this. You'll burn, you know! You know yourself I must do as I'm told. I like it's not you'd be sending me to hell. I like not the sound of it, I tell you. I like not the sound of it. Now, Proctor, believe me, how heavy be the law, all its tonnage I do carry on my back tonight. I have a warrant for your wife. You said she were not charged. I know nothing of it. When was she charged? I'm giving 16 warrants tonight, sir, and she is one. Who charged her? Why, Abigail Williams charged her. On what proof? Now, Proctor, the court bid me search your house, but I like not to search a man's house. So will you give me any poppets your wife may keep here? Poppets? I never cut no poppets, not since I was a girl. I spy a poppet, goody proctor. Why, this is Mary's. Would you please to give it to me? Has the court discovered text and poppets now? Do you keep any others in this house? No, no, this one until tonight. Tell me, what signifies a poppet? Say it, Missy, reply that. Now, woman, will you please come with me? No, she will not. Fetch Mary Warren here. No, I am forbid to leave her from my sight. You will leave her out of sight and out of mind. Fetch Mary Warren here, Elizabeth. What signifies a poppet, Mr. Cheever? Well, say it, Miss, signify that. Why, like this, this. Why, like what's there? I well, see it, sir, it is a needle. And what signifies a needle? My, this go harder than talk to this. I had my doubts, but here's calamity. What is it? What meaning has this? The girl, the Williams girl, Abigail Williams, sir. She sat to dinner at Reverend Paris's house tonight, and without word nor warning, she falls to the floor like a struck beast, he says, and screamed a scream that a bull would weep to hear. And when he goes to save her, it stuck two inches into the flesh of her belly, and needles stuck. And the magnet of her, which came to be so stabbed, she touched by where your wife's familiar spirit pushed the needle in. Why, she done it herself. Surely you're not taking this for proof, Minister. Tis hard proof. I find here a pop, Goody Proctor keeps it in the belly of the poppet, and needles stuck. Proctor, I tell you, I never warranted to see such proof. Hell, I plead you obstruct me not, for I... Mary, how did this poppet come into my house? What the poppet's that, sir? This poppet, this poppet! Well, it is mine, I believe. It's your poppet, is it not? It is. And you made it yourself. I... Your mind is surely made up. Mary Warren, the needle hadn't found inside this poppet. Well, I meant no harm by it, sir. I... And you stuck that needle in yourself. I believe I did, sir. Again, your mind is set. Child, you are certain this be your natural memory. Might it be, perhaps, that someone conjures you even now to say this? Conjures me? Why, no, sir. I'm entirely myself, I think. Let you ask Susanna Walcott. She saw me so in court. Or better, ask Abby. Abby sat beside me while I made it. Bid him be gone. Your mind is surely made up. Well, sleeping by the needle. Mary, you charge a cold, cruel murder on Abby. Murder? I charged you. Abigail was stabbed tonight. A needle had been found stuck into her belly. She charges me. I. Why, this girl's murder she must be ripped out of the world. You heard that, so ripped out of the world. Out of you. How do you dare not touch that warrant? Damn the deputy governor, out of my house. You ripped the deputy governor's warrant, then. Out of my house, damn the deputy governor. Now, Proctor, Proctor. Hey, you come with him. You are a broken man. Proctor, she's innocent. The courts will try. Is the accuser always holy? Were they born this morning as clean as God's fingers? I see now what we always were, except little children dangling keys to the kingdom, and common vengeance writes the law. And that warrant is vengeance, and I will not give my wife to vengeance. Now keep her, Proctor. I have nine men outside. The law binds me, John. I cannot budge. 
Will you see her taken? Fuck, of course, just try to. Punch this pile of God without when you wash your hands of this. I'll go with them, John. You will not go! No. There's bread for the morning meals, baked in the afternoon. How Mr. Proctor is, you are his daughter. You'll need that. When the children wake, speak nothing of witchcraft. We'll find them. I will get you soon. I will come for you soon. You'll we'll find me soon, John. I will fall like an ocean upon the court. Fear nothing, Elizabeth. I will fear nothing. Tell the children I've gone there to someone's sake. Sake, John, I cannot help myself. I must chain them all. Now let you keep inside this house until I am gone. Mr. Proctor? Out of my house. Charity, Proctor! Charity! When I have heard in her favor, I will not fear to testify in court. God help me, I cannot judge her guilty or innocent. Only this consider. The world goes mad, and it profit nothing you should lay the cost of the vengeance of a little girl. You are a coward. And though you be ordained in God's own tears, you are a coward now. Proctor. I cannot thank God you folks so grandly by such a petty cause. The jails are packed. Our greatest judges sit in Salem now, and hanging to Thomas. Man, we must look the cause proportionate. Were the murder done in Salem, perhaps? Abomination? Some secret blasphemy that sinks to heaven? Think on cause, man, and that you help me to discover it. For there is your way, believe it. There is your only way. Let you counsel among yourselves. Think on your village and what may have drawn from heaven such thunderous wrath upon you all. I shall pray that God open up our eyes. I have never heard of murder in Salem. Go home, Francis. John, tell me. Are we lost? Go home, Thomas. We're coming in the morning again. Good night. Good night. Mr. Proctor? Very likely the last of the court ones that could be proper things. You will tell the court what you know, and we will go together. You will charge murder on Abigail. You will tell the court what you know, and you will tell the court how this proper came into my house. You know, she'll kill me for saying that. I will charge lechery on you. So she's told you. You have known it. She'll ruin you with it. I know she will. Good then. Her saintliness is done with. Let us slide together to our pit, and you will tell the court what you know. Thank goodness you'll never die for me. My wife will never die for me. Make your peace with it. Peace. It is a providence of no great change. I see now what we are, what we always were. But naked. I naked. And the wind, I God's icy wind will blow. That you've given yourself to the reading of fortunes. Do you deny it? I believe it's a witch. I don't know who a witch is. How do you know then that you are not a witch? If I were, I would know it. Why do you hurt these children? I do not hurt them, I scorn it. I am a witch for the court! You will keep your safe. Thomas Pratt is reaching out for that! Remove that man, Marshal. You're hearing a lie! A lie! Rest in excellency. I have evidence! Well, you're not here, my evidence! Child, child! You cannot go either. You can't get there, Harry. I have evidence for the court. You cannot go either, Giles. This is cause. Pray you, be calm a moment. No, Miss Hell. Go on, A moment, sir, a moment. Don't be hanging my wife. How dare you come alone to this court, Corey? Have you got a dad? We got a fuck and check. Yeah, how can I will not go to dad? Who is this man? Giles Corey. Say that. I'm more contentious. I asked a question I am old enough to answer it. My name is Giles Corey, sir. Next 600 acres of timber in addition. It is my wife you be condemned. How do you know to help cause with such contentious right? Now we're gone. Your whole day's going to teach you how to jail for this. That's what they need to tell lies about my wife, sir. Do you take it upon yourself to determine what this court shall believe and what it shall set aside? Excellency, we mean no disrespect. Disrespect, indeed. It is disruption, mister. This is the highest court of the supreme government of this province. Do you know it? Excellency, I only said you were books, and they come and take out of my house for... What books? It is my third wife, sir. I never had none be so taken with books, so I thought to find a lawsuit, you see. But there was no witch I blamed her for. I broke charity with the woman. Broke charity. Excellency, he claimed more evidence for his wife's defense. I think they're not justice. The gate is evidence of proper affidavit. 
You are certainly aware of our defeat against the chaos. We, we are desperate selves. We come here three days now, we cannot be heard. Who is this man? That's his nurse, sir. His wife went back in there with him down this morning. Indeed. I'm amazed to find you in such uproar. I only have a good report of your character, Mr. Nurse. I think they must be both of us in my sir. Let you write your plea, and in due time, I'll look through it. Your Excellency, we have proof for your eyes, and God forbid you shut them to it. The girls, the girls are frauds. What's that? The girls, Your Honor. They are frauds. Your Honor, Mr. Danforth, this is clearly an attempt. Peace. Do you know who I am, Mr. Nurse? Yes, Your Honor. And I must be, you must be a wise judge to do what you do. And do you know that you're the 400 are in the jails from Marblehead to Lincoln without my signature? I, and some need to condemn to hang by that signature? Yes, sir. Mayor Warren, what are you about here? You should speak with the deputy governor. Did you not tell me Mayor Warren was sick in bed? She will, Your Honor. When I go to the back, she was going to call me last week. She said she will speak. She's been driving with her soul all week, Your Honor. She's come to tell the truth to you now. Who is this man? John Parker, sir. Elizabeth Parker is my wife. Are you aware of this thing, Your Honor? This thing is mischief. I think he was with the girl, sir. She was. What would you tell us, Mary Warren? She never saw no spirits. Never saw no spirits. Never. She signed a deposition, sir. No. No, I accept no depositions. Tell me, Mr. Parker, have you given out this story in the village? We have not. He's here to hold the court, Your Honor. I pray you, Mr. Ferris. Are you aware, sir, that the entire contention of this court is that the voice of heaven is speaking through these children? I am, sir. And you, Mary Warren, how can you cry spirits upon, upon these people? I cannot hear you. It were pretense, she said. Ah. And the other girls, Suzanne Waka and the others, they are also pretending? Uh, Indeed. You cannot think too less so loud a light is spreading open the court. Indeed not. But it strikes hard upon me that you would come here and spread such a lie. I tell you straight, mister. A husband's tenderness may drive into a shabbiness in defense of a wife. Are you certain in all honesty that your evidence is the truth? I sir, it is. And you'll surely know it. And you thought, present, you thought to present it before the other court. I sir, with, with your permission. Now, sir, what is your purpose in doing so? Why I would free my wife? There was nowhere in your heart, nor hidden in your spirit, any desire to undermine this court? No, sir. I. Your Excellency, Mr. Cheever, when we went to his house, do not deny it, John. He damned the court and ripped your warrant. Now you have it. He did that, Mr. Miller? Aye, he did. It, it were temper, sir. I knew not what I did. Mr. Proctor. Aye, sir. Have you ever seen the devil? No, sir. You are in all respects a gospel Christian. Aye, sir. Such a Christian that would not come to church but one single month. What's this? That can do. I have no love for Mr. Paris. It is no secret. But God, I surely love. You plow on Sunday, sir. Plow on Sunday? I have three children. And until last year, my land gave very little. You'll find other Christians that plow on Sunday if the truth be known. Your Honor, I cannot think of a judge the man with such evidence. And judge of nothing. I tell you straight, mister, I have until this moment not the slightest reason to believe that these children may be aligned before the court. Do you understand my meaning? Excellency, does it not strike upon you that many of these women have lived with such an upright way, with such an upright reputation? Do you read the gospel, Mr. Bunker? I read the gospel, Mr. Harris. Then you surely know that Cain was an upright man, and yet he did kill Abel. Hi, God tells us that. But who tells us Rebecca Nurse murdered seven children by sending her spirit out? And with this one only, and she testified the others were lying. I. She is in one. Mr. Proctor, your wife gave me claim in which she says she is pregnant now. Um, my wife pregnant? There be no sign of it. We have examined her body. Well, if she says she is, then she must be. She will never lie to you, Daniel. She will not. Never, sir. Never. We have thought it too convenient to be true, but I will tell you this. If she, if she were kept another month, and if she saw her natural signs, she, she will be under your roof for yet another year until she is delivered. What say you to that? Will you drop this charge? Uh, I think I cannot. Then your purpose is somewhat larger. Is she to overthrow the court? These are my friends. Their wives are also accused. I judge you not, sir. I'm ready to hear your evidence. I come not to hurt the court. Marshal, go to Judge Stalin. Stalin, Judge Stewart, the clear recess for an hour. I, sir, if I may say it, sir. I know this man all my life. It's a good enough. I am sure of it, Marshal. <coughs> now, sir, let you present your evidence, and I beg you be clear, open as the sky, and honest. I have no lawyers, so I will make a clear and heart need no lawyers. Proceed as you will. Here you go, sir. Those upon it declare their good opinion of my wife, Martha Corey, and Rebecca Nurse. They're good opinion. Aye. They're all landholding farmers, sir. They've known the women many years and never saw enough sign that I'm dealing to the devil. 
How many names are here? Sir, uh, 91, sir. I think this should be summoned for passion. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, then, sir. It is not necessarily an attack, I think. Yes. I give my word that no person who signed this warrant shall befall harm. This is a clear attack upon the court. Is every defense an attack upon the court? Can no one even think of all Christians and good people are happy for this court in Salem? These people are gloomy for it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Certainly are. And I, and, and I think you want to know from each and every one of them what this intends them to be. Mr. Chief, I have drawn more strong for these. Arrest for examination. Yes, sir. I have brought trouble upon these people. No, ma'am. You have not brought trouble upon these people. But you must realize that a person is either with this court or he must be counted against it. There be no road between. This is a sharp time now, a precise time. We live no longer in the dusty afternoon where evil makes itself a good in the fall of the world. Now, by God's grace, the shining sun is up, and then that do not fear the light will show you praises. I hope you will be one of those. She's not part of the scene. No, sir, she's not. Now, Mary, remember what the angel Raphael said to the Lord Tobias. Remember it. Do that which is good, and no harm shall come to thee. Hi. Come, man, we wait you. John, <coughs> my deposition. Give him one. This is Mr. Corey's deposition, sir. This court. You know, I never hired a lawyer by life. It is very well phrased. My compliments. Mr. Paris and Mr. Clinton is in the court. Will you bring it in? You have no legal training, Mr. Corey. Actually, I have the best. I've been in court 33 times in my life. Only played it too. Oh, then you must put up on I never put up on I know my wife's that will happen. You know, your father tried a case of mine once. Did he ever tell you this? No, I cannot recall it. That's strange. You father, you are a fair judge. You see, this fellow had a white bear at the time, and another fellow was going to follow that bear. I, there he is. Mr. Putnam, Mr. Corey gave me a deposition in which he states that you coolly prompted your daughter to cry victory on George Jacobs and now in jail. What say you to that? It is a lie. Mr. Putnam states your charge is a lie. What say you to that? Say a fuck on Thomas Putnam, that's what I say to that. Now what proof do you submit for your evidence? The proof is there. If Jacob Hanks is probably built up to the market, that's wrong. And Putnam is the only one with the coin to buy such a great piece. This man is killing his neighbors for their life. But proof, sir, proof. The proof is there. I heard it from an honest man who heard Putnam say, the day his father cried out on Jacob, he said he'd give him a fair gift of land. You know this man? <laughs> what name? The man that gives this information. I cannot give you a name. Why not? You know well why not. How he will hate if I do. You will surely give us a name. I will not. I mentioned my wife's name once, and I'll burn it hell long enough for that. I stand. <coughs> in that case, I have no choice but to arrest you in contempt in this court. Do you know it? I would. This is a hearing, and you cannot put me in contempt in a hearing. Oh, it's a proper lawyer. Do you wish me to call this court to full session, or you will you give me a name? I cannot give you. A name. You are a foolish old man. Mr. Cheever, begin the record. The court is now in session. Sir, we have the story for confidence. The ceremony lifts us such confidence. Without confidence, there can be no conspiracy, Your Honor. Think it ought to be broken, sir. Old man, if your informant is honest, let him come here openly like a decent man. But if he hide it in anonymity, I must know why. Now, sir, the church and the government demand of you the name that claim Thomas Putnam to be a common murderer. Excellency. Mr. Hale. We cannot think it more. There's a prodigious fear of this court in the country. And there's a prodigious guilt in this country. Are you afraid to testify in this court, Mr. Hale? Only for the Lord. But there is a fear in the country, nevertheless. You reproach me not with the fear in the country. There's fear in the country because there's a moving pot to top of Christ in this country. But it does not follow that everyone accuses part of it. No uncorrupted man may fear this court, Mr. Hale. None. You are under arrest and contempt of this court. But I'll kill you, Pato! I'll kill you, Pato! Peace, peace, Pato, peace. Say nothing more, John. They need to hang us off! This is a court of law. I will have no pressure here. Forgive him, sir, for his old age. Mary, remember what the angel sent to Lord's advice. Remember it. There is your rock. This is Mary Warren's deposition, sir. I asked while you read it that you remember until two weeks ago. She screamed, she howled, 
And she saw her testify that familiar spirits choked her. She even testified that Satan and the former women now in jail. Kim Steele was stole away. We know all this. I, sir. She testifies now that she never saw no spirit, vague, no clear, and Satan came in no form to steal her soul. Excellency, a moment. I think this goes to the heart of the matter. It surely does. I cannot say he is an honest man. I know him little. But in all justice, sir, a claim so waiting cannot be made by a farmer. In God's name, sir, stop here. Send him home and let him come again with a lawyer. Now look you, Mr. Hale. Excellency, I have signed 72 death warrants. I am a minister of the Lord, and I dare not take a life without there be a proof so immaculate. No slightest form of consciousness may doubt it. Mr. Hale, you surely do not doubt my justice. I have this morning signed away the silver like a nurse runner, and I conceal it. My hand she says with a wound. I pray you, sir, this argument that lawyers present to you. Mr. Hale, for an uneducated man, you are most bewildered. I hope you will forgive me. I am 32 years at the bar. I should be confounded where I call upon to defend these people. But this child claims the girls are not truthful, and if they are That not, is exactly what I'm about to consider. What more may you ask of me, unless you doubt my probity? I surely do not, sir. Let you consider that. And let you put your heart to rest. Mr. Cheever, go and get the girls from the court. I sir. Mayor Warren, how came you to this turnabout? Has Mr. Proctor threatened you for this opposition? No, sir. Has he ever threatened you? No, sir. So you mean to tell me that you sat in my court, callous the line, when you knew people would hang by your evidence? Answer me! I did, sir. How were you taught in your life, Mary? Do you not know that God damns all lies, or is it now that you lie? No, sir, I'm with God. You're with God? I am. I will tell you this. You're either lying in the court or you are lying now. And in either case, you will be arrested for perjury. You cannot lightly say you lied. I cannot lie no more. I'm with God. Ruth Putnam is not in the court, sir, nor are the other children. These will be sufficient. Your friend Mary Warren has given us a deposition in which she states she has seen no spirits, apparitions, nor familiar manifested to devil. She also states that neither of you have seen any of these as well. It may well be that Mary Warren has been conquered by Satan. If so, her neck will break for it. But I bid you now drop your cow and confess your pretense, or a quicker confession will go easier with you. Abigail Williams, is there any truth in this? No, sir. Children, an auger bit will be drilled into your souls until your honesty is proved. Will either of you drop your positions now, or do you force me to hard question it? I have not to change, sir. She lies. You would still go on with this? I... A pocket was discovered in Mr. Proctor's house. Mary Warren claims that you sat next to her when she made it. She also claims that you saw her stick the needle in it for safekeeping. What say you said? She's a lie, sir. When you worked in Mr. Proctor's house, did you see poppets? I did not always kept poppets. My wife never kept up poppets, Your Honor. Your Excellency, when I went to speak with Goody Proctor in that house, she said she never kept no poppets, but she did say she kept poppets when she were a girl. My wife has not been a girl this 15 years, Your Honor. Her poppets will keep 15 years with that. It will keep if it is kept, but Mary Warren testifies over her poppets. Why can't a poppet be hidden where no one has ever seen them? There might also be a dragon with five legs in my house, but no one has ever seen that. We are here, Your Honor, precisely to discover what no one has ever seen. Your Honor, what have Mary Warren's gain except hard questioning or worse? You are charging Abigail Williams with the marvelous cool plot to murder. Ah, I believe she means to murder. This child would murder your wife? Instead of the congregation, she were twice this year put out of the meeting house for laughter during prayer. What's this? Laughter during it. She were on the teacher most power at the time. She saw him now. I saw him and now she goes to hang! Be quiet, man! Surely I'm a contemplation of the question. It surely doesn't. <coughs> Continue, Mr. Popkin. Mary, tell the governor how the girl Abigail Williams goes to the woods. Your Honor, since I can't just say that this man's been black in a moment, Mr. Harris, what is this dancing? Hey, Mr. Proctor. Abigail leads the girls to the woods and they dance there naked. Mr. Paris discovered them in the dead of night. There's a child she is. Has she danced? Abigail? Your Excellency, when I first arrived in Beverly, Mr. Paris told me that. Do you deny it, Mr. Paris? I have never seen anyone naked. But they have danced? Thanks, sir. Excellency. Will you permit me? Pray proceed. Very warm. You claim you've never seen the devil nor manifesting the devil's agents, correct? Aye, oh, sir. Yet, in a courtroom with those accused of witchcraft, you would faint, claiming their spirits attacked you. I cannot hear you. Pretense, sir. But you did turn cold, did you not? I myself picked you up many times at your scheme where I see you. I saw that many times. They're pretending. They're all marvelous pretenders. And can she pretend to faint now? Now. Why not? 
Since there's no attack conspiracy in the fourth room, and for now this room is accused of witchcraft, let her turn herself cold. Let her pretend to be attacked by spirits. Let her faint. Yes, faint. Faint? Why, faint. Prove to us how you, how you pretended so many times you were bored. I cannot do it now, sir. Can you not pretend it? I have no sense of it now. I. Why? What is lacking now? I cannot tell. Might it be that there were afflicting spirits loose in the court, but there are none now? I never saw no spirits. How do you know you never saw spirits? Spirit? Show us how we can, how we can faint by your will, I suppose. Okay? I cannot do it. Then you will confess, me you not? We were attacking spirits that make you faint. No, sir. This is a trick to fly the court. It's not a trick. I, I used to faint because I, I thought I saw spirits. I thought you saw them. But I did not, Your Honor. You know you not sell spirits unless you have actually seen them. I cannot tell how, but I, I heard the other girls screaming, and you seem to believe them. And it was born in the beginning, sir, but then the whole world cried spirits. Spirits, and I promise you, sir, I never saw no spirits. I only thought I saw them, but I did not, Your Honor. Sir, Your Honor, is not this medicine. I have you, I bid you now. Search your heart and tell me this. Might it be that the spirits you have seen are illusion only, something that comes to your mind when possibly. I have been hurt, Mr. Danforth. I have seen my blood running out. I have been near murdered every day because I have done my duty to put together the devil's people. And this is my reward to be mistrusted. That crust is like a. Child, I do not mistrust you. Think you'd be so mighty, Mr. Danforth, that the powers of hell would have you. Oh. What is it, child? It's the wind, the cold wind, the hubby. They're pretending to get forth. Lord, save me. I pray. I pray. Abby, don't do that. She's cold, Your Honor. Touch her. May I warn you? Do you wish them? I say, do you cast your spirit out on them? No, sir. Oh, Heavenly Father, take away the shadow. I wouldn't call Heaven whore. What are you talking about? It is a whore. It is a whore. You charge. Mark her now. She's a fucking to stab me with. You have proved this. This will not pass. I have known her, sir. I have known her! John, you not possibly you say are a Oh, oh, you might know. The good man will never ring out the goodness of his good name, but you surely see that now. I have laid myself a Tyler in your hands. You must see that now. In what time? In what place? In the proper place, in my beast of bed, some, on the last day of my joy, some eight months past. You see, one man may think that John's age, but God sees everything. You see, my wife put her out on the higher beat, but she is a bundle of vanity! Forgive me, sir, but you think you dead with me on my wife's grave. She might as well, or God help me, I must sit. But there is a promise of such sweat, and I see it now, and you must see that I set myself entirely in your hands. You deny every scrap and tittle of this? If I must answer that, I will leave, and I will not be coming back. Why did you give me such a I will have this much! You will remain where you are! Mr. Ferris, go to the court and bring her my oh, This is all I Bring her out! Tell her not one word of what's been spoken here. Let you knock before you answer. Now we shall touch the bottom of this swamp. Your, your wife, you say, is an honest woman. Aye, right, sir. There are them that cannot sing, them that cannot weep, but my wife cannot lie, sir. And I paid much to know it. When she put this girl out of your house, she put her out for a harlot? Aye, right, sir. And knew her for a harlot? Aye, right, sir, she knew her for a harlot. Sit then. And if she indeed tell me a word for harlotry, may God spread his mercy on you. Hold! Turn your back. Turn your back! Do likewise. But neither of you turn to go to cross or raise a gesture, I amen. Enter! Mr. Sheever, begin the record. Are you ready? Come here, woman. You will look at me only, not at your husband, in my eyes only. We are given to understand that at one point you dismissed your servant, Abigail Williams. That is true, sir. For what reason did you dismiss her? Look at me. You need not look at your husband, only at me. You have the answer in full confidence, and you do not need his help to answer. Why did you dismiss Abigail Williams? She dissatisfied me and my husband. In what way dissatisfied you? She. Look at me. Was she slovenly, lazy? What disturbance did she cause? Your Honor, I, in that time we were speaking of, 
My husband is a good and righteous man. He's never drunk as some are, nor wasting his time on the shuffleboard, but always at his work. Do you see, sir, in my sickness, I was a long time sick after my last baby. And I thought, I thought I saw someone turning from me and this girl. Look at me! I, sir, Abigail Williams. What an editor Williams? I came to think that he fancied her. And so one night, I lost my wits, I think, and put her out on the high road. Your husband. Did he indeed turn from you? My husband. It's a goodly man, sir. Then he did not turn from you. He... Woman, look at me! To your own knowledge, did John Proctor ever commit the crime of lecture? Answer my question. Is your husband a lecher? No, sir. Remove her, Marshal. Elizabeth, tell the truth. She has spoken. Remove her. I have confessed it. Oh, God. You're about to say my name, Your Honor. Excellency, it is a natural light of town. I beg you, stop now before another is condemned. I may shut my conscience to it no longer. Private vengeance is working through this testimony. From the beginning, this man has struck me true. On my own to heaven, I believe him now, and I pray you, call back his wife before we. She spoke nothing of lecture yet. This man has. I believe him! This girl has only. Oh, God, 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 I see! What is it, child? It's only the Where? Why? Why do you go with a bird? Where's the bird? I see no bird. My face! My face! Mr. Hale, be quiet! Mr. Hale, be quiet! You know, it's terrible.
Sarah, wake up, Sarah, good. Oh, Maxie, come in, come in. Did you look? He's here. Maxie's come. Go, go to North South. This place is wanted now. I don't look like the majesty to me. It looks like the marshal. Come on, no. Clear this place. Oh, you're the new marshal? I'll show you. The delegates come to the And where are you off to, Sarah? Oh, we go to Barbados. As soon as the delegates hear with his feathers and his wings. Oh, a happy boy to you. Hey, Sarah, we were going to make this up to you just as soon as we It's going to be a grand transformation, Marshall. You can't see me die, or you will never rise off the ground. Come on now. Do you decide to come along, Marshall? I will not refuse to teach you It is a proper morning to fly to hell. Oh, well, there be no hell in Barbados. The devil, he'd be a pleasure man in Barbados. He'd be singing and he'd be dancing. It's you folks around here who have him riled up. Hey, Sarah, look. It's him. I'm here, Marshall. The deputy government has arrived. Come along, come along now. No, he, he's coming for me. Let's not sit and just have a you. No, come on now. Devil, devil, take me home. Some of them are going. Some of them are good at going too. Where is this, Jess? I will fetch him, sir. The you call she hell, is it? Come as no surprise if he has been preaching the end of We'll come to that. Speak nothing about the other. Here's the place with him. It's strange. Paris, long ago. He would have been a wise man in the prison and so on. He's a bad look these days. Bad? Aye. Such as this morning. I said hello to him, but he had simply wept a few minutes away. They did not go for the village to see him in such condition. Perhaps he has some sorrow. Perhaps. Good morning. I I think I beg your pardon for with me up, sir. Good morning, Judge. We've been here. I have no right to enter the government, sir. Prisoners? What's this business here? It is, it is a problem, sir. Mr. Hill has returned to whom the witness to God. He bid them confess? Hear me, sir. She had not given me a word for the past three months, but now she sits with him. She sits with him. If confess their crimes and save their lives. But this is indeed problems, and they suffer. They suffer? Not yet, not yet. But I thought you summoned you, sir, and we might become really in our wise to. I have thought to put up put up a question, sir. Mr. Harris, be plain, what troubles you? There's news, sir, that a poor must wreck me. My niece, sir, my niece. I believe she's vanished. Vanished? I, I thought you advised you were earlier. Why? How long is she gone? This is the night. You see, sir, she told me she would stay with Mr. Lewis for a night, but the next day when she does not return, I sent to Mr. Lewis to inquire. Mr. Told, told him they would stay at my house for a night. They are both gone? Aye, sir. I will send a party for them. Where may they be? I think they'd be a worse ship, sir. You see, my daughter told me how she heard of part of them speaking of shit last week, and tonight I discovered my strong box is with them. Imbecile. Has she robbed you? The third one caught is gone. I'm kidding this. Mr. Paris, you are a famous man. Sir, it probably nothing that you should blame me. Uh, I cannot think they would run off sailing, except if you're to keep here anymore. 
Marty, sir, I have you go ahead close knowledge of the town. And since the news of Andover has broken. Andover is remedied. The court returns there on Friday and will resume the examinations. I'm sure of it, sir. But word speaks of rebelling in Andover. There is no rebellion in Andover. I tell you what he said here, sir. Andover has so through all the court, they say, it will have no part of witchcraft. There will be a faction here feeding out that news, and I fear there will be a riot here. Riot? Why, in every execution, I've seen nothing but the highest satisfaction throughout the townspeople. With other sort of hand to knowledge, I've called to learn. Rebecca Nurse is not richer than the three years with the bishop before she married him. John Proctor is not Isaac Ford that drank his family to wounds. These people have great, great gift in this town. Let Rebecca stand on the gibbet and send us some righteous prayers that I feel, and I fear she will defend the son. With the next word, sir. Please. How do you propose that? Your Excellency, I will postpone these hands for a time. There will be no postponements. But now, Mr. Hale's return, there is hope. For even, for even if he brings one of, these, one of these to God, that surely the other others in the public eye. Them, none without them more than they are all into hell. That way, unconfessed and innocence, house are multiplied. And many honest people will be for them and our good purpose in the of tears. Give me the list. We cannot be forgot, sir, that when I called the congregation for John Conquest's excommunication, there were hardly 30 people coming here. That speaks to this intent. There will be no postponement. So, Excellency. Now, hear me. Which of these do you have hope for? I will myself strive with you until dawn. There is no sufficient time for dawn. I shall do my utmost. Which of these do you have hope for? Excellency. A dagger. What do you say? When I, tonight, when I left my house and I opened my door, a dagger clattered to the ground. You cannot handle this sword. There is danger from me. I dare not step outside at night. Thanks so much. Congratulations, Reverend Campbell. We are glad to see you return to your good work. I must pardon them. They will not budge. You misunderstand, sir. I cannot pardon these when 12 already hangs for the same crime. It is not just. The sun will rise in a few minutes. Excellency, I must have more time. Now hear me, and beguile yourselves no more. I will not hear a single plea for pardon or postponement. Them that will not confess will hang. Now draw yourselves up like men, and help me, as you are bound by heaven to do. Have you spoken with them all, Mr. Hale? I'm a proctor. He is in the dungeon. What's proctor's way now? He sits like some good bird. You will not know he's alive unless he would take food from time to time. His wife. His wife must be one with the child now. She is, sir. What say you, Mr. Ferris? You have posted knowledge of this man. My express my presence offering him? It's possible, sir. He had knowledge that is not for the past few months, but not something. Is she is he yet adamant? Has he struck at you again? No, she's chanting. He's chanting the wall now. That's pretty that's pretty proper. Then let you bring him up. I can see. If you go for a week and publish the company, we're striving for the confessions. That's big mercy on your part, not faltering. Mr. Hale. As God have not empowered me, like Joshua, to stop the sun from rising, so I cannot withhold these from the protection of their punishment. If you think God wills you to raise rebellion, Mr. Danford, you are mistaken! You have heard rebellion spoken in the town? Excellency, there are orphans wandering from house to house! Abandoned cattle battle on the high roads! The sick riding crops seems everywhere, and no man knows in the harlot's cry will end his life! And you wonder yet if rebellion spoke? Better you should marvel how they do not burn your province! Mr. Hale, have you spoken in Andover this time? Oh, thank God they have needed me in Andover. You baffle me, sir. Why have you returned here? Why? It is all simple. I come to do the, I come to do the devil's work. I come to counsel Christians they should rely on themselves. There is blood on my head. Can you not see the blood on my head? Goody Proctor, I hope you are hearty. I'm yet six months before my time. Pray be at your ease. We come not for your life. We. Mr. Hale, will you speak with him? Could you prompt him? Your husband is marked hang this morning. I have heard it. You know, do you not, that I have no connection with the court. I do my own pity, Proctor. I would save your husband's life. For if he is taken, I count myself as murderer. Do you understand? What do you want of me? Proctor, I have gone these three months like our Lord into the wilderness. I have sought a Christian way, for damnation is doubled on a minister who counts as men to lie. Let you not say your duty as I must do my own. I came into this village like a bridegroom to his beloved. There are gifts of high religion, the very crowns of oil I brought. And what I touched with my bright confidence, it died. And where I turned the eye of my great faith, blood flowed out. The rarity factor. Flee to no faith when faith brings blood. It is mistaken law that leads you to sacrifice. Life for 
Life is God's most precious gift. No principle, however glorious, may justify the taking of it. Thank you, woman. Prevail upon your husband to confess. Let him give his lie. Quail not before God's judgment on this. For may will be God damned to lie or less than he throws his life away for pride. Will you plead with him? I cannot be able to listen to another. I think that be the devil's argument. But he brought before the laws of God. We are his swine. We cannot read his will. I cannot dispute with you, sir. I like learning to so you. You're not brought here for disputation. Be there no wifely tenderness within you? He will die with the sunlight. Your husband, do you know it? What say you will you contend with him? Are you stoned? I tell you true women, had I no other proof of your natural life, your dry eyes alone would be enough evidence that you delivered your soul up to hell. A very ape will weep at such calamity. Have the devil dried up any fear of pity in you? Take her out. The prophet nothing that she should speak with him. I will speak with him. I said, you'll start with him. Will you plead for his confession or will you not? I promise nothing. Will we speak with him? Leave your Mr. Proctor, you have been notified, have you not? The sun is yet rising. Let you counsel with your wife, and may God help you turn your back from hell. Take these out of the side, Mr. Proctor. God is now. The child? He grows. Is there any word from the boys? They're yeah, well. The back is seven keeps them. You have not seen them? I have not. You have been tortured. Hi, they come to my life now. I knew it. And then you confessed. There will be many confessed. Were they? There will be a hundred and more. Good Beller is one, Isaiah Goodkind is one. There will be many. Rebecca? Not Rebecca. She's one but in heaven now. Not to be heard of more. And Giles? You have not heard of it? I hear nothing where I have kept. Giles is dead. John. Where were you hanged? Can we not hanged? Can we not answer the indictment I or nay for if he denied to charge the hanging surely and auction out his property? And so he stand mute, and die a Christian under the law, and so his sons will have his father. For it is the law that he could not be condemned a wizard without which he answered the indictment I or nay. And how does he die? They press him, John. Press. Gray stones lay upon his chest until he plead I or nay. They say, he give them but two words, more weight. He says, and died. Um, you were a man, Giles Corey. I was thinking I would confess to them. What say you to that? I cannot judge you, John. What would you have me do? Do as you will, I'll have it. I want you living, John. That's true. And Giles' wife confessed. She will not. It is a pretense. What is? I cannot bother to give it like a saint to Elizabeth. My honesty is broke. Nothing is spoiled by giving them this lie that were not rotten long before. Yet, you've not confessed to him now that speaks goodness in you. Despite all that keeps me silent, there's not to keep a life from such dogs. I would have your forgiveness, Elizabeth. John, there is not for me to give them. Let them who have never lied not keep their souls. For me, it is fraud. It is a vanity, a vanity that will not blind God nor keep my children out of the wind. John, you come to not that I should forgive you if you not forgive yourself. It is not my soul, John, it is yours. Only be sure of this. I know it now, whatever you will do, is a good man does it. I've brought my heart this three months, and I have sense of my own to count. And he's a cold wife to prompt my Enough, children. enough. Have you should know I him? know you, I know you. Take my sins upon you, No, God. I take my own. I take my own. I count myself so plain, so poorly made, and no honest love could ever come to me. Suspicion kiss you when I do. I never knew how I should say my love. You were a cold house I kept. And say, Proctor, it's not soon up. Do as you will, but let not be your just. There be no higher judgment in heaven than Proctor is. Oh, forgive me, forgive me, John. I never knew such goodness in the world. I want my life. You'll confess yourself? I will have my life. God be praised. It is a providence. Why do you have to confess? Proctor shall confess. It is evil, is it not? But it is, it is evil and I do it. I cannot judge you, John. I cannot. God in heaven, what is John Proctor? What is John Proctor? I think it is honest, it is, honest is it not? That the men have never lied. Let Rebecca go. For me, it is fraud. I cannot be your judge, John. I cannot. Would you give them this? Do as you will. Would you give them such a lie? If talks of fire are sending you, you would not give them this? But that 
is evil and I do it. Praise to God, man. Praise to God. You shall be blessed in heaven for this. Now then, let us have it. Mr. Cheaper, are you ready? Aye, sir. What must be written? Why put a good instruction in the village? This we shall post upon the church door. Where is the marshal? Marshal, hurry! Now then, speak slowly and to the point for Mr. Cheaper's sake. Mr. Proctor, have you seen the devil? Come, man, there's light in the sky. The town wakes up the staple. I would give them this news. Did, did you see the devil? I did. And when he comes to you, what were his demands? Did he bid you do his work, your work, his work upon the earth? He did. And you bound yourself to his service? Come in, come in, woman. Courage, man, courage. Let her see your good example so that she may come to God herself. Now hear it, good voice. Say now, Mr. Parker, did you bind yourself to the devil's work? I did. Oh, John. Now you certainly see a prophet nothing to keep his pretense. Will you confess yourself with him? God said his mercy on me. I say, will you confess yourself, good enough? It is a lie. How may I damn myself? I cannot. Mr. Proctor, when you saw the devil, did you see Rebecca next with him? No. Did you see her sister Mary Easty? No. Have you seen Mark DeCorey with him? No. Have you seen anyone with the devil? No, I did not. Proctor, you mistake me. I cannot trade your life for a lie. It is, it is proven. Why must I say it? Why must you say it? Why you should be proud to say it if you have purged yourself from any love from hell? They, keep, they think to keep their souls, and I like to disappoint them. They never lie. Mr. Proctor, do you think they go like saints? I'm not to keep. I cannot speak upon their sins. I have no time for it. Excellency, it is enough. He confessed himself. Let him sign it. Let him sign it. It is a great service. It is a waiting game. He will strike the village that Proctor confessed. Let him sign it. I beg you. Let him sign it. Come then, sign your testimony. Give it to him. Come and sign it. Why must it be written? Will you will not sign it? No. If you please, sir. No, you have never seen me. There is no need for this. How the village must have. Damn the village! I confess to God. God has seen my name on this. It is enough. You have not confessed. I have confessed myself. You can't just save my soul. Did you not? I have confessed myself. God sees my name on this. God knows how flat my sins are. It is enough. It is not enough. I am no Sarah Good. I am no teacher. I am John Proctor. This part of no salvation that you should use me. I do not wish to use. I have three children. How many teachers have walked in the world? But I have sold my friends. You have not sold your friends. You gotta be not. I've walked in all from the very day this hang upon the church and they hang for silence. Mr. Proctor, I must have good and legal. You are the high court. Your word is good enough. Tell the court to go to his knees and wipe like a woman. But, but my name it is, is enough. Is it not? If I say it or if you sign to it? No, it's not the same. What I sign and what you testify is not the same. Then tell me, Mr. Proctor, why will you Because not it is my name! Because I cannot have another in my life! Because I lie and sign myself to lies! Because I am with the dust on the feet of those that hang! I have given you my soul, please leave me my name! Is that document a lie? If it is, I will not accept it. What say you? The sun is up. I must have a good confession in my hand. I cannot keep you from the road. What say you? Man. Marshal! Man, you will hang me now! Can I your first marvel? That I can! I see some strength of goodness in John Crockton. Not enough to wiggle better, but we're good enough to keep yourself dogs. Yeah. Show them no tears. <laughs> tears give them pleasure. Show them a stony heart and sick them with you. Hang them high over the town, who weeks for these, weeks for corruption. Goodness now. God forbid I take that from him. 